What's up? Dennis here, Analog Archives. All right, today we're going to talk about top 10 Bay Area thrash metal records. Um, yeah, man, I've been wanting to do this stream for a while. I've been busy with some stuff I had to do at work, so I was out of, out of commission there for a little bit. Uh, but uh, on to this fucking video, man. Um, so I was thinking, what prompted me to do this video is I saw a video by... I just happened to run up across it. It was... I don't remember his name, but the guy that ran Alchemy Records, and he also ran, or not ran, but was in the band Clown Alley, which was a Bay Area crossover thrash band. And he was talking about uh, Mark Osagueda, who had done a top 10 thrash metal list, and um, Bay Area thrash. So I kind of went down this rabbit hole on that, and I was like, well, I should do my own. Um, so I kind of wanted to do one and go through some records and talk about them and talk about some honorable mentions and things like that and some of the stuff from the scene at the time so um what we're jamming here is nocturne i think these guys were from holland 1991 kind of death thrashy killer shit check out nocturne if you haven't heard them um and what we're gonna drink here is a hazel liam this is beer zombies. They do these really cool cans, but the beer is really good. That's the thing with this, and it's probably a hazy, obviously. Uh, beer zombie brewing, seven percent. Um, DDH hazy IPA, seven percent. So let's break into this bad boy. And if you don't know, that's based on the movie uh, Mausoleum, where the chicks' tits grow monsters. Fucking rules. Movie's awesome. Pretty good. All right. So I kept these to full length records. I don't want to do demos or anything like that. Um, I do have something planned in the future where I'm going to talk about kind of demos and bands from the Bay Area that a lot of people didn't talk about or don't talk about. So this is basically my top 10. And a lot of these I'll talk about why they're in this position. I mean, this is based on my favorites or what I listen to or what I still go to or what I think are uh, really great fucking records. So um, let's start out with number 10. Uh, let's do Forbidden, Forbidden Evil. Um, killer fucking record, man. Um, came out kind of late. I think this came out in 87, if I'm not mistaken. 88. Yeah, kind of late for the scene. So I think has a obviously has a reason for me not putting this record higher. Um, I saw this band as Forbidden Evil open up for Slayer on Rain and Blood tour at the Stone. So at one they were called Forbidden Evil, which I had the demo too, but I'm not pulling out shit like that. But um, and this is actually the original cassette, and I I just pulled the CD too because. Um, you guys love to see those OGs, man. And some of these CDs are going for crazy prices now for some reason. Uh, but, yeah, record rips, man. Chalice of Blood, um, On the Edge, Through the Eyes of Glass, Forbidden Evil, March into Fire. Uh, man, Follow Me, the end track. Fucking just sick, man. Um, there's the guys. But yeah, classic Barry, a thrash style, where the vocalist, um, Russ Anderson, he had more of a traditional, almost, he was more trying to go for the highs and stuff like that. And for me at the time, I was like, dude, please stop. And you have to think, I was already into all these other Slayer and fucking early death metal and stuff like that. I didn't want to hear like high screaming vocals anymore because but i mean going back to this stuff this album fucking rips uh love this record i think this record i might like a little bit more even though um i think for the this is more technical but kind of better songwriting infinite out of body out of mind step by step twisted into form r.i.p man shit just rips and this is a cool version too because it's actually 
uh, signed by the band inside. And when I was on the stream with Craig, he was like, yep, that's legit, man. Those are real, that's our signatures. I was like, cool, dude. I didn't think somebody was like trying to fake forbidden signatures. Like, hey, man, let's fake these forbidden signatures. We're going to get hella bucks for this CD. But both these albums, fucking rippers, man. Um, just classic Barry, thrash. Fucking just, but just badass. Vocals are killer, too. Russ Anderson's a man on that. Um, all right, let's go on to number nine. And I'm going Testament, The Legacy. Uh, so this record, again, released, I believe, 87. A little bit late in the game for me again. Um, but, man, some of the songs on here, Over the Wall. So th this is the problem with this record for me is the first side, like Over the Wall, Haunting, Burn Offerings. Raging Waters, which I've talked about before, was a theme park in uh, the Bay Area, like a water slide park, so this was always like a funny song to me. Uh, Curse of the Legions of Death, First Strike is Deadly, um, Alone in the Dark, Apocalyptic City. Like, the last couple of songs kind of lose me a little bit. Um, they're just not my thing. They get a little tedious, I guess, to me, but like those, the first side up into like, Alone in the Dark. Alone in the Dark. I don't know. His voice kind of grates on me a little bit on that song. Um, but still, killer fucking record. Um, number nine. I love the fucking guitar tone on this record. It's so fucking good, dude. It's so fucking good. Um, I might like the second record a little bit better song structure-wise, but it doesn't have that guitar tone. I pulled it out because um, this would have been in there if it didn't for one didn't have a fucking cover song on it um, by Aerosmith but yeah dude New Order Trial by Fire Into the Pit Disciples of the Watch just has some banger songs on it but again it's almost a little overproduced for me where the guitar tone is down less in the mix and it's more I don't know more accessible I guess but it's fucking great fucking um I love the way that it's uh, the song structures are, but yeah, badass record. But for me, the first one, as far as thrash goes, I would go with fucking Legacy. Obviously, they were called Legacy. I guess I should mention that because maybe some people don't know. They were called Legacy with fucking Zetro on vocals before they switched to Chuck Billy, and obviously Zetro went on to Exodus. So, all right, where are we at? Number eight. Death Angel, The Ultra Violence. Man, another one. Love this record. When I first heard the demo, I was expecting something heavier. I was expecting more of a Dark Angel sound. And I was like, what? What's with this guy's vocals? And like, I wasn't a big fan, but I. then this record came out and I was like, okay. Evil Priest, Voracious Souls, Kill is One. Those three songs right there, man. Just kill. Then uh, Mistress of Pain, Final Death. Oh man, banger, banger, fucking record. Um, obviously, young guys. I think the drummer was like 14 or 15 when they recorded this. But yeah, man, saw these guys uh, multiple times. Right along with Testament, obviously, and uh, Forbidden. But yeah, just badass. Uh, great fucking debut. That really can't be touched, and that was from, what year was that? That was 87? Yeah, that was 87. Alright, on to number 7. Back to cassette, because I fucking traded my original vinyl back in the day, but I still have the original cassette. Um, Sadis. Uh, Chemical Exposure on vinyl was called Illusions. I don't know why the CD and the cassette, they changed the name to Chemical Exposure. Uh, I think this was actually self-released. Um, at least the cassette. It doesn't have... It's not on a label. Oh, uh, it's not. So that's cool. Um, it's funny, too, because it says Illusions on the inside. Chemical Exposure. Oh, man, the song's on here, dude. 
and the production. Certain death, undead, sadist attack, torture, fucking fight or die, twisted face. I remember one time. So, Sadist used to open up for, like, every band back in the Bay Area. Um, Creator, fucking Autopsy, Hex, all those bands. Or maybe Hex opened for Sadist, Creator. They open for everybody. Um, but I remember one time going to this dude's house, me and my friend Eric. Uh, my This guy, John, that we used to hang out with at work. He had a Twisted Face shirt that he got at the show. And my, my friend really wanted that shirt. And so we went over there, and I think he traded him, like, two records or something for it, or a record, like a Merciful Fate record, maybe. I don't remember what it was to get that Twisted Face shirt. And then, like, he cut the sleeves off. <laughs> Came to school with it the next day. What's up? <laughs> I was like, dude, what did you do? Cut the sleeves off? It's like, yeah, fuck that, dude. Shit rules. I was like, cool, man. It was a cool shirt, though, if you guys haven't seen the art. And Sadists were cool. They for That sound, man, it was just like... Uh, it was like super crunchy and fast and fucking you had Steve uh, Steve DiGior- DiGiorgio's fucking bass it was like he wasn't all funked out at that time so it, you would just hear like boom boom it would just like come through it was just so fucking badass it wasn't like all technical like he would be later on where it got all you know goofy and shit um, for me, anyways, I know people like that shit. Oh man, he's playing fretless bass. Like, who cares, dude? I don't want to hear that shit. Um, but yeah, man, that's first Sadist just fucking crushed. Um, love it, love it. Um, if you just want to hear a pure fucking straight to the fucking neck thrash record, and they were just badass in concert too. Pretty sure that they all wore like flannel shirts and were like completely stoned every time they played. But yeah, that was number seven. Number six. It might be a little low on the list for a lot of people, but for me, I'm going Metallica, Kill Em All. Um, so OG Press on Megaforce. There's, I have a lot of these. This one doesn't have the insert. Um, but I had this other cool version too that I got lucky funny this one was on megaforce but it it actually has the extra songs um so it has am i evil uh and blitzkrieg on it from the ep which is cool this one's really fucking hard to find and it's direct metal mastered whatever the fuck that means Obviously, this came out in like 88, or this version. But anyways, enough about the press. Um, yeah, man. Uh, first time I heard this song, this record, I was a kid at my friend Scott's house. And we were like going through records. We were really into Motley Crue at the time. He had this big ass fucking Motley Crue shout at the devil poster above his bed and shit. We worshipped that shit. We love fucking Motley Crue and Iron Maiden and fucking Death Leopard and fucking Ozzy and Sabbath and all that shit and then we saw this in his brother's collection we were just like downstairs and we're like dude what the fuck is that you gotta remember we're like kids and we're like oh dude that looks killer man so and we, we had been drinking um, like Kahlua we would get the Kahlua out of his dad's like um like cupboard he would hide it and we'd fucking be taking shots of Kahlua and he lived in a condo and we would it was like a two story thing where if you went up to the top story it like overlooked the bottom of his um, living room so we would go up there and jump off the top onto the couch we would try to like make the couch sometimes we hit the table you know we'd be like oh fuck or whatever you know doing dumb shit drinking Kahlua jumping off fucking balconies um, kid stuff. <laughs> um, but anyways, so we put this on and we're like, what the fuck is this, dude? And we were expecting like Motley Crue type stuff or whatever. And it was just like straight to the fucking face. And we were just like, we never heard anything like this. And we're just like, oh man, this sucks. This sounds like punk, man. 
we were like laughing at it and we were like i wonder if this is like so like for some reason we thought it was satanic or something so we try to like play it backwards i don't know but anyways that was my first experience with kill em all um yeah man the songs on here four horsemen fucking destroy jump in the fire whiplash Phantom Lord, No Remorse, Seek and Destroy. Man, just a badass fucking record when they were, like, actually just a fucking... Like, they were just so fucking huge in the underground scene. I mean, I was too young to be at those shows, so I don't... I don't... Never even saw Metallica until Ride the Lightning Tour. Um, they are already gone out of the Bay Area by the time I had heard... The first album I heard was Ride the Lightning. I mean, I heard this first before Ride the Lightning, but I didn't pay attention to it because I hated it. Or I just didn't, I don't know. I just didn't pay attention to it. Um, but I was like, man, I want to go back. So when I heard Ride the Lightning, I went and bought this. And I'm like, oh, shit, this album fucking rules. And then I like this album a lot more than Ride the Lightning. But I could see why I got into Ride the Lightning. I think I saw it at like a record store and I'm like, I remember that band. Or maybe I saw like an ad in Hip Parader or something like that. So I was like, oh, I'm going to check it out. And I really liked Ride the Lightning when I heard it. So I went and bought this record. And um, man, fucking just Bay Area classic, man. And obviously, you know, James from L.A., Lars from Denmark. So not, a, not they didn't, those two guys didn't originate, but you know, then Cliff Burton, Kirk Hammett, both Bay Area guys. Dave Mustaine was from L.A., but he's not on this record. So, um, But they relocated early on in their career before they recorded this. So, Yeah, just a great fucking record. Can't really talk too much shit on Kill em All. I mean, today, like, you listen to it, you just hear, like, for me anyways, um, I hear a lot of Early Maiden, a lot of Priest, a lot of Diamond in it, a lot of... I hear some Budgie in there, some Scorpions. Like, you start hearing some early Priest, like... You start picking up on all their influences. UFO in there, where you're like, oh, that sounds like Metallica, or whatever it is. You know what I mean? They just took all these riffs and, like, made this record. And they wear that on their sleeve. They're never... They never would, like... No, it's original. Like, they just took those and melded it into a heavier, like teenage punk version of um, New Wave of British Heavy Metal. So. Alright, where are we at? Number six? I think. Um, I didn't write down numbers, so it is what it is. Uh, Blind Illusion. Man, Sane Asylum. Come on, man. This album fucking kills. I remember hearing this record. Well, I had heard Blind Illusion before. Um, on the Metal Mania VHS, so I knew I knew the demos, and which is a lot of these same songs: Blood Shower, Vengeance Is Mine, Death Noise, Smash the Crystal, uh, Vicious Visions. Like it has a lot of the same songs that are on the demos, so it wasn't like a big surprise when I heard this. But they added Larry Lalonde from fucking Possessed on here. This is just a fucking Bay classic, man. Like, this band doesn't get enough credit. They were around back in, like, 78. <laughs> fucking. With, uh, fucking. Obviously, it's got fucking Les Claypool on bass and, um, what the fuck's the guitarist's name? Uh, Biederman. Yeah, Biederman. He went to school with Kirk Hammett. So they play guitar together. Kirk Hammett actually um, produced this record and produced the demos. Yeah, man. Just fucking killer. Slightly progressive. A little technical, but really, really original sounding. Like, there's nothing out there that sounds like this record. Uh, but it's thrashed to the core. But, man, just a badass fucking record. And then, yeah, I haven't really listened to anything after this record. I'm I've heard stuff here and there, and it's it's decent. Um, this is a combat version. I've heard some stuff here and there, but uh, it's for me. It's this and the demos, man. That's blind illusion to me. 
up next. All right, speaking of possessed, we have Beyond the Gates. <laughs> Super underrated record, right? Um, they spent a lot of money making this record. I mean, this jacket, at least. Took away the upside down cross, even though the lyrics are still super satanic. The Heretic, Tribulation, March to Die, Phantasm, which fucking crushes, man. No Will to Live, Beyond the Gates, Beast of the Apocalypse, Seance, Restless Dead. Like, every song on here is a fucking straight up banger. And then when this record came out, which was, what year did this come out? 86? Just a year after fucking um, Seven Churches, which I pulled as well. So it was a year after this, which was 85. Um, this record rules too, but I consider this more of a death metal record. I know, like, things can be said to like be like, nah, dude, that's thrash or whatever. But to me, this has always been like the first death. This and death, Scream Bloody Gore and uh, Season of the Dead are more the first like death metal records. But it was weird because a band doesn't usually get... They don't usually go from like death metal to thrash metal, but this one did. This record reminds me a lot of uh, Destruction, Eternal Devastation, especially the guitar sound, uh, which I love that record too. So, and I wasn't a huge fan of this record when it came out because I want to possess. I want a Seven Churches 2.0. But uh, over the years, man, this record—it's almost my go-to possess record nowadays. Just a fucking banger, dude. And then. I also pulled um, Eyes of Horror as well because what if like they had made a full length of Eyes of Horror, man? That would have been such a great fucking record. Um, so yeah, that would have been badass. Just a killer fucking EP. And then of course they, uh, the incident with um, you know the singer and him getting shot and uh, Jeff Becerra and they had a. You know, they cut the band, then they came back in the 90s and did a couple of demos. Um, but, yeah. All right, what's next? Uh, number, th I think we're on number three, man. Um, Sacrilege BC, Party with God. Notice there's no BC, because they didn't have to put BC at this point until, I guess, the band from the UK complained i'm not too sure why they had to change um but so this was the band that i was talking about where the owner of alchemy records because this is on alchemy was um saying hey man they put sacrilege as our mark osagueta had put sacrilege in his top 10 list so he was like that's cool man like this band doesn't get enough rec uh, recognition. Um, songs like Asmoroth, Crucified. I mean, I can go every song on here. Judge Death, Fun with Napalm, Skinned Alive, Fuck Death Toll. Every song on here just fucking rips, man. It's like fucking pure thrash, but it has like some crossover elements as well. And it's just very urgent. It's a very urgent fucking record. Um. I saw these guys many, many times. Kind of like Sadist, they opened up for every fucking band. And they never got respect back in the scene either because um, they opened for a lot of punk bands and the punk bands hated fucking Sacrilege. They'd be like, fucking get off the stage, cut your hair. I don't know. I don't know what the animosity was. Uh, but yeah, they didn't. this band never got a lot of recognition in the Bay, in the scene, but... I'm glad that they're getting some recognition now, and this record just goes for the throat, the whole fucking record. One of my favorite records of all time, thrash records. All right. Number two. So we're getting to the nitty gritty. I guess you guys can kind of expect what we're going to do here. Um, violence, Eternal Nightmare. Dude. This record just, again, is just non-stop fucking thrash. Like, if I was thinking, like, some records that are just pure thrash. You have this, you have fucking Pleasure to Kill, um, 
like demolition hammer, but that's more death thrash. Where this is just fucking just pure uh, darkness descends. It's just a pure thrash record from beginning to end. And this is one of them, man. Just a fucking banger of a record. Eternal Nightmare, Serial Killer, Calling in the Corner, Bodies on Bodies, Kill on Command. This record just rips. And uh, there's the insert. This is on Mechanic Records, so it was actually like a kind of a major label at the time. I remember they had all these big promos and stuff in the metal magazines that you could get a free demo, basically, of this record. So you could basically send away and they're going to send you a free cassette. I never did that, but I should have. Um, I was too lazy or something. I don't know why I didn't do it. But I remember getting this record and I kind of had to stick to my guns on this because my friends hated this record. It came out in 88 and again, by then, everybody was listening to fucking really heavy shit. Um, and that was kind of the problem. I was already into Destruction and Creator and Sodom and all these bands and then Stuff like this would come out, and me and my friends would, or I would like it, and they'd be like, "Ah, oh, dude, that's fucking weak shit. And it doesn't have harsh vocals and that kind of stuff. But I always liked his vocals. They never bothered me. I know they bother a lot of people. It's like, you either love this band or hate them. And it's mainly because of Sean Killian's vocals, right? Um, obviously, it has fucking the dude from Machine Head, Rob Flynn. Um... And that dude can write a riff. I mean, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Machine Head. I like, like, the first record in the demo, but after that, they kind of lost me. Um, but, I mean, that was the 90s. What do you, I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> You're not going to, they're not going to just stay like a thrash band. Didn't make sense at the time. But people are always like, oh, dude, that shit sucks. It's like, dude, what do you want? You want them to just be putting out, like, stuff that sounds like violence? Like, they're not going to sell any records. People don't listen to that. That's what people don't understand these days. They're like, oh, dude, that shit sucks. Like, why would you like that? It was like, that was what the scene was. There was no thrash bands. Like, every band was changing styles to fit what was happening in the scene. Which makes sense. I mean, you can't just stay the same. I mean, even all the death metal bands all change their styles um, to try to sell records, right? I mean, you're a band. You have to do something. So you can't always hate on them. I mean, you don't have to listen to them. Just listen to some old shit. But you can't fucking hate on shit for, like, bands... Like, them joining a different band and changing a style to sound like something current or something that they're into now. So just don't listen to it. Um, and it's just younger guys because they don't understand. They don't understand that it's just a progression. Just, like, from... You know, Black Sabbath all the way to fucking thrash metal. It's a progression. You can't... Bands aren't going to stay the same. It's just... That's just how it is. I mean, you can't really go much further now, but... I mean, it was an exciting time for death metal at the time, right? So I get it. Like, you know, why listen to Machine Head? But there's people... There was people out there that like that kind of shit, so... Um, it is what it is. But anyways, I'm getting off track. Um, I did want to kind of talk about the second record... Um, God, this record's really hard to find these days. Um, I don't know what's going on. They never were able to do a repress. This is the original cassette of Oppressing the Masses. Really stupid album cover. Not sure what's going on there, but this record fucking destroys, man. Um, yeah, Officer Nice, I Profit. I remember seeing them on this tour. I was actually there for the video shoot of World in a World. I remember the guy with the camera on his head in the pit. And those shows were fucking crazy, dude. Um, yeah. And I always liked this band because they were kind of like the predecessor to like the OG fucking thrash scene in the Bay Area. Like, they just didn't give a shit. And they were like more hardcore than like the other bands like Forbidden and Death Angel where they were more like kind of like progressively changing their style into like something more radio front not radio friendly but maybe like listener friendly where people that listen to like iron maiden or something would listen to them but um violence weren't really like that so just a fucking badass band um just killer love this record as well i would love it on vinyl um but all right let's get to the number one and we can probably all guess what it is. Exodus, Bonded by Blood. There it is, man. 
This is it. The number one fucking Barry at Thrash Metal fucking record of all time. <laughs> what can you say? This is uh, this is Barry at Thrash Metal. These are the guys that like took Metallica in, um, fucking possessed all these bands. This was this was the band, man. Um, so glad I got to see them at least a little bit uh, before they uh, changed or they kicked Bailoff out of the band. Got to see them few times and then got to see him back in 97 uh 97 again when he rejoined so fuck man just this is like really really again just go for the throw fucking thrash metal don't give a shit what anybody thinks uh bonded by blood exodus and then there were none less than every song on here piranha no love uh, get, fucking deliver us to evil, fucking kill, strike of the beast, one of the best thrash songs ever fucking written, and of course, man, Paul Bailoff, dude, dude was the fucking scene, man. So um, he would could just fucking call people out, um, and that's what kind of the Bay Area scene was kind of set apart because of that, where you kind of had this more violent type of scene where um, you can pretty much get your ass kicked at any point so um and that was kind of the thrill of it right is going to see these kind of bands and being like shit dude who's, who knows what's gonna happen um somebody gonna get stabbed or we're gonna fucking be drinking 40s out back like <laughs> and being a kid seeing this stuff it was just crazy man but love this record to this day still my favorite fucking thrash metal record and bay area thrash metal fucking just a banger pure fucking banger um talk about a couple other things um before i fucking cut this thing uh the torture tactics violence um this was released after i think in between eternal nightmare and um oppressing the masses if i remember correctly yeah because it has officer nice live on here um but the funny, well, it's got Torture Tactics, which is a cool song, but the funny thing on here is it's got a song called Gutter Slut, and that's the first song I, I heard was Gutter Slut. I heard that and Paraplegic, which were on the demos. Those are the first two violent songs I heard. And they did have a different vocalist before Sean Killian that was more of a thrash vocalist, more standard thrash. And if you can hear those demos, they're pretty badass as well. Um, the third violence record, Nothing to Gain. Uh, never was released. This is on Power Age. I think this is just a boot that got released at some point in the 90s. Uh, not a great record. You could tell they're headed towards that machine head type of style on this, but there's some good songs. I like uh, Ageless Eyes. It's cool. And if you listen to the re-release of Eternal Nightmare, it does have Ageless Eyes live version on there, which is killer. But the production on this is fucking horrible. Uh, probably just a demo, I'm assuming. Um, some other bands to talk about. This isn't Thrash, but um, Laz Rocket, City's Gonna Burn, more of a speed metal record, but it was leaning towards Thrash. Uh, City's Gonna Burn, Take No Prisoners, fucking just killer songs, Silent Scream. Uh, this one was pretty cool, was um, Know Your Enemy. This came out after no stranger to danger was the this is the third Laz rocket record um yeah and this is more thrash but more in the vein of like bands like metal church or something where it's got the thrash stuff but it's it's very very classy classy thrash i guess you would call it uh, but killer record the third one's good too um but yeah so check that stuff out um yeah fuck dude I'm going to probably do another Bay Area one, but I'll talk, I'll get more, it'll be like more of a murder in the front row type of thing with, but I'll talk about bands that really didn't get mentioned in that documentary, like with demos and stuff like that. Um, kind of want to do that because there's a lot of bands that don't get any recognition because they didn't really have records out. Oh, I forgot a record I forgot to talk about. Damn it. I don't know where I put the fucking cassette. Oh, here it is. This album, man. I forgot to talk about Heathen. Um, Victims of Deception, man. Oh, man. It's a, such a fucking good record. First record's pretty good, too, but it's more generic, like thrash. 
But this record, man, super... Uh, if you like the second Forbidden album, you'll love this record. It's in that same vein. The guitar tone sounds a lot like the Testament guitar tone on Legacy. Just a crushing fucking record that no one really talks about. Um, you had other bands like Defiance. Um, trying to think of any other bands. Epidemic was another band that was around, but they were more like Death Thrash. Uh, but check out that Heathen, and then check out the fucking Heathen with Paul Bailoff. They did a demo with Paul Bailoff. That shit kills, man. Fucking Bailoff sounds like straight off Bonda by Blood on that. So fucking sick. It's only two songs, but fucking kills, man. All right, guys. Um, I'm done here. I will talk to you guys soon. Cheers.